Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube audio guide. In this episode we're going to take another look at audio splitting within DX Tori. We focused a lot in the past on splitting audio for gameplay footage or streaming, whatever you want to do. And there's been two ways of doing it so far. The first was an overly complicated way and probably an outdated way now um, using purely virtual audio cable. It was annoyingly complicated. You had to install annoying things with settings. It caused a lot of latency. It was just an unefficient or an inefficient method of splitting audio I found. The second way I covered was a more expensive option. It worked fantastically, it worked like a treat. It was the probably simplest method of doing it. However, you needed to spend money on a, a headset, which had a dedicated communications device and an external audio card, which not everybody wanted to do. So in total, that costs you, you know, quite a bit. So this third method is probably the most up to date and free and efficient method of doing this. It's probably not the most latency efficient because I think the, the Triton AX Pro or the, the second version I've covered was the most efficient in terms of latency, but this isn't far off and it's absolutely free. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to get download the software required for this. You need two pieces of software. They can both be downloaded from the same site. So go to VB Audio and download Virtual Audio Cable. You'll want this install VB cable virtual audio device. That's the only thing you'll need. If you scroll down, there's other things, but you just need to install this one. So download that, scroll back up and also go to voice meter. And then you can download this from the link below. Install voice meter. Once you've downloaded these, you can install voice meter normally. However, the, the actual audio cable, the first thing you've downloaded will download as a zip file. Just unzip it to its own folder and then install the 64 bit version. If you have a 64 bit OS, if you don't, then just use the normal 32 bit installer. Once you've done this, give your computer a reboot because it might need it. I've already done the necessary reboots and then go to your sound options. I have a shortcut on my desktop because I'm forever changing the sound options in, uh, in this just between for default devices, but I probably don't need to do it now, but I have this shortcut here. So just go to your sound devices. This is my main speaker. This is my external audio card, which sends the audio to my speakers. Um, so these are essentially my speakers. We're not using those. We want to change the default device to voice meter input. So set that as the default device. You'll also see this extra playback option. It has this image. It's probably called VB cable or something like that. I've renamed it by going properties and then just re renaming it to comms input. You can do whatever you want. That's, I've also renamed this to M track out. So. It's just, you know, everything works for me. If you want to rename things to however you want to, then feel free, but this is how I've done it. And you should be able to figure out what all these mean. The next step you'll need to do is to go into your comms. So by comms, I mean either Skype or TeamSpeak or whatever you use. But I personally like to use TeamSpeak. So I'm going to load up that, go into settings, options, and I'm going to set my playback device as comms input VB audio virtual cable. This will probably be named different if you've just left it as default, that's fine. Just find what it is in the brackets, VB audio virtual cable. It's all you need to do, press okay. I'm just gonna go back into the settings and do a play test sound. Testing your playback sound system. Excellent, it's working fine, I can hear that. The next step is to load up voice meter. So this is what it looks like. That button there will take you to the website. You want to select hardware input one as the cable output. So this is what you installed um, first before voice meter. This is the other thing you installed, which is also being linked through Skype or TeamSpeak, whatever you use. This is the comms input that's going into here. And to prove that I'm going to do another playtest sound and you'll see it appear here. Testing your playback sound system. You can see there's a slight delay between it yeah, you know, appearing on here and, and, and sound, but it's fine. Number two, I always just remove device selection. We don't need that. It's, you know, I just have these disabled as well. And virtual input will be your system sound because you've set the default device device to this. And finally, you want to set your hardware out to whatever speakers you use. Personally, I have this going to my external sound card, which, which then goes to my speakers and my headphones, which I'm currently wearing. The good thing about the M track, which I use is they can go to speakers and headphones simultaneously, and I can control them independently of each other. So I can have the main levels 
completely down so it's not coming through my speakers and uh, the headphones up so I can hear it in my headphones which is currently what I'm doing now. If I was to press play test sound, it, if I was to turn up my speakers as well, they would come out of my speakers as well as the headset but that's just my setup and it works like a charm. Finally, we need to set all this up in DX Tori. In order to do this, this is how I personally do it. I select number one, record the sound, 44.1 16-bit red book standard, have it as voice meter input. That should be your system audio or your game audio, whatever you are recording, whether it be just your desktop or whatever. That will that will just be your system audio. So basically the game audio on stream one. On stream two, I have my microphone, which is being recorded directly. And then number three, we have comms input, which is the VB audio virtual cable. What this will do is record the input of the cable. So Skype into this and yep, you're good to go. That's pretty much all there is to it, to splitting your audio channels absolutely for free. We're going to test this in a game. So I've just gone ahead and loaded up Minecraft. I'm going to hit single player and just open up a world here. Right, now that we're loaded in, I'm going to press the record button. And we should have sound coming through. So we have my microphone, my game sound, and then let's go in and test the Skype or TeamSpeak audio. Testing your playback sound system. So we get it all on one video. Testing your playback sound system. Testing your playback sound system. All right, and now let's stop the recording. and see if it's worked. And we should have sound coming Sound system. So it's all there on, you can see it's all there in the video. Let's extract the audio streams. So on track one, we should have the game audio. Track two should be my microphone. Sound coming through, so we have my microphone video. And on track three should be the TeamSpeak or Skype audio. Testing your playback sound system. And there we have it. That is the most cheapest and probably efficient way of recording and splitting your audio channels using DX Tori and Voice Meter and VB Virtual Audio Cable. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.